Hi there, Toy here, and it's time for my July book reviews. So um, I just posted my wrap up on my other channel, my Toy Thomas channel. And so if you want to see that, you can check that out. It gives you just kind of an overview of things and lets you know what's happening. But this is where I'm actually going to post my reviews. So um, let's just get right into it. The first book that I'm going to review is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky and I gave this a five stars and I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that I am going to review it right now but I'm going to be posting a spoiler review for this book um, soon after this. Um, I'm not shooting it today, but anyway, I um, loved this book so much that I just want to talk about it, and I don't have a lot of friends who have read the book or reading the book, so I'm talking about it with you. So hopefully you don't despise spoiler reviews and you'll check it out. But for now, here is the spoiler free review. This is the type of story I wish existed when I was a kid. And <laughs> Sorry if I'm rocking. I'm, I'm petting my dog Margie. She's upset. There's a storm. Back to the review. I've always enjoyed fantasy stories and stories about heroes, but I haven't always had heroes that looked like me. Yes, of course it's true that I am a fan of Marvel's Storm and Black Panther, but what's great about Tristan Strong is that he feels more real and he doesn't have superpowers. I like that he's a young man, but this book doesn't get caught up in some of the typical tropes of middle grade and young adult stories where everything is just kind of whiny for no reason. Don't get me wrong, this does have some of those moments, but they all serve a purpose at some point. I read this story at a time in my life when I was really seeking and needing something uplifting and empowering. This book came along at just the right time. After the murder of George Floyd and the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, reading this book helped take, helped take away some of the pain and it gave me hope. This book offered an escape that didn't pretend like the world was perfect or try to cover up the wrongs of the past with tales of fairies and magic. Though I do recognize that there are times and places for just such an escape. The imagery and symbolism within this story is powerful. Tristan Strong gets sucked into another world where monsters are out to get the good guys and the monsters are literally shackles worn by slaves. I won't go into too much detail there because I don't want to give away spoilers, but you can see them clearly on the cover of the book. There's so much more to it, even down to the point of what and who the villain at the end ultimately ended up being. I was shocked and moved and was almost to the point of tears once it all came together and I don't even know if that was the point of it all. As a black person it was emotional and still I believe other people of color will be moved by it and perhaps even some woke non-POCs will feel the weight of the villain's revelation. Whether the same emotion is felt or not I believe all readers can understand the importance of the transformation Tristan goes through and all the lessons he learns along the way. What's also great about this book is that it's funny and adventurous. It was wonderful to see old folk tales being depicted as new gods and seeing old African gods blended with these folk tales to create a world I could not have imagined as a kid. Nothing against the Greek pantheon of gods but we've all seen them so many times this was truly a refreshing mythological world to dive into. I can't wait for the next book to come out so I can find out more about these characters and see what they get into. I really must have more gum baby in my life. I hope this book is one day taught in schools sooner rather than later. I feel like there's so much more to say about this amazing book as far as breaking down characters, um, breaking down the plot, symbolism, and humor um, but it's all, I'm all just too emotional right now. Maybe a year from now I'll revisit this review and add more to it. But for now, just know that this has been the best book I've read all year. Maybe years. Which is saying a lot since I read a book last month that had been my best book of the year. This book is highly recommended. 
So, all right, let's see what else I read in the month of July. So the next book that I read was The Girl Who Talks to Ghosts, and this was a sequel to a book that I read last month, and I ended up giving it five stars. Here we go. This is the second in a series, and it switches the main supporting character from the first book into the MC role and vice versa. Kate has taken on an unusual case, even for her, and calls on Jackson for support. They again find themselves traveling outside of the U.S. and soon realize that language barriers and currency exchanges are the least of their worries. For the first time, Kate isn't trying to help a ghost, but the soul of a living girl trapped between both worlds, and Kate is figuring out what to do along the way. I love the way Kate is portrayed as confident and strong, yet willing to admit her mistakes. While Jackson is the muscle and the charm of the pair, it's clear that Kate is stronger in other ways that often ends up saving their lives. Jackson is also a source of distraction for Kate as they both recognize their potential for a rom romantic relationship. Considering the times we live in, I, I think it's important to list this potential relationship as a possible trigger for those who haven't read the first book because this would be an interracial relationship. For me, it's simply another layer of their already complex and enjoyable story. Besides, romance is in no way a major or even minor subplot in this story so far. This book um, was a lot scarier than the first book, but because I read the first book, it helped me cope with some of what I read. For some reason, whether books, film, or TV, um, whenever kids are thrown in, it always feels creepier. Yet, as someone who is still on the fence about horror as a regular genre to read, I did find the frights to be sophisticated and meaningful, not just gory for the sake of it or all shock value. Um, I have the next book in the series and look forward to seeing where these, where these characters get to next. Highly recommend it to horror, suspense, thriller, and paranormal fans. All right, so let's see what I read next. The next thing I read was A Sloth's Guide to Mindfulness, and I gave this an overall rating of four stars. Um, this is a picture book, but it's not a children's book. Let's just get into the review. This is a cute book, but I thought it would be a little more deep. I like this book because it's mostly suitable for kids, but it's actually for adults. This is not a bedtime story. The illustrations are minimalist and clever. The overall tone of the book seems to focus on positive thinking and general ideals that appear to be representative of many Eastern philosophies. I feel as if the author attempted to cram centuries of complexity into a few short cartoons which may or may not have much impact on the reader. In some ways, the book is practical and even delightful. In others, it felt in other ways it felt fell flat. Still, overall, it got me thinking about my own thought processes. I feel that if this book is meant to be a self-help guide, it will divide readers into those who get it and the ones who don't. I think it takes a really open mind to look past the adorable images to see the seriousness at the root of the book's message. If it's just meant to be a light, entertaining read that gets you thinking about ways to be mindful, I think it excels. For those who faithfully practice Western religions, this book may not vibe well in the context of a self-help book, but it could still be valuable as entertainment. In any case, I don't think there's ever anything wrong with spreading a message of positive thinking, thankfulness, and self-care, whether you meditate on it or not. Recommended to those who enjoy meditation and minimalism. All right, and lastly, um, what I read in July was an anthology of cozy mysteries. So let's, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the review. Um, it's called Mystery Follows Her, and I gave it an overall rating of four stars. This was a fun read I discovered because of an author I followed who contributed one of the stories in this collection. 
it was nice to get a sampling of other cozy mysteries from authors new to me. While Buried at the Beach was the story that had me laughing the most, it was not my favorite, but it came in a close second. Closed Out was the story that really pulled me in. It started out kind of sad and then frustrating as the mystery unfolded. It was a delightful roller coaster ride getting to the conclusion. The mystery of the stolen ring came in third and also brought in the laughs. While Treasures in Heaven almost had me in tears, in a good way. When the clock chimes too also made me laugh, as did others. I don't know if I need to keep going on listing and ranking every story in the book because honestly, there wasn't a single story I didn't like. I think my only complaint is that for me, the first story, Thanksgiving and Theft, should have appeared later in the collection. I don't have a clear reason for this as, as to why, but, but I think it's because while some of the stories deal with death, this one also deals with loss. It may have been too sad of a start for me, though the story ended on a high note. In any case, I was happy to discover these lovely stories and their authors. Highly recommend it to fans of Cozy Mysteries. So that's what I read in the month of July. Hopefully you saw something that you'd be willing to check out yourself. Let me know in the comments or share with me something that you read that you think I might like. And that's all I have for now. Bye!